flyback converters also consist of a switch with its according gate drive signal, a diode, and an output capacitor. Furthermore, the load again is modeled by a resistor. But instead of an inductor, we now have a transformer. Flyback converters are widely spread in applications from, for example, mobile phone chargers, tablet chargers, and laptop chargers, all the way up to household appliances in the few hundred watt range. Basically, they can be used anywhere. They are very simple and they provide galvanic isolation through the transformer, which is a safety requirement by law. We can again divide the operation of the flyback converter into two stages. One where the transistor is on, that is for the time zero until the duty cycle times the period time t from the gate source signal on the last slide. And that means during the on time of the transistor, we have current flowing through the primary side of the inductor and the voltage source on the input is in parallel with that primary side of the inductor through the perfect short through the switch. And through Faraday's magnetic law, we get the voltages transferred to the secondary side from the dotted end to the non-dotted end in a positive way. Faraday's law tells us that the volts per turn in a magnetic coupled circuit are the same for all windings. So the input voltage divided by the number of turns on the primary side must be equal to the voltage across the secondary side divided by the number of turns on the secondary side. As the non-dotted end on the secondary side is getting pulled negative, with respect to the ground on the secondary side, the diode here is blocking and the capacitor is providing current to the load. In terms of efficiency, we once again have current through the transistor, but no voltage across it. The transformer is getting magnetized, which is indicated by the two lines here, indicating the core of the transformer. And the diode here is blocking voltage, but not conducting any current through it. Both the transformer and the capacitor do not have any power dissipation, but only can store energy. Where the inductor is storing energy in the magnetic field and the capacitor is storing the energy in its electrical field. During the off time of the switch, we have a perfect open here, so we have voltage across the transistor, but no current through the transistor. But as the magnetic flux in a transformer cannot jump, and we had current flowing into the dotted end of the transformer, this current is now forcing the diode on the secondary side to turn on and conduct the current to charge the capacitor and provide the load with the energy it needs. As the diode is a perfect short circuit, we have the voltage of the output capacitor also across the secondary side of the transformer. And that voltage is now applied from the non-dotted end towards the dotted end. Faraday's magnetic law still tells us that this voltage is getting transformed now back to the primary side, which is also called back EMF, where EMF stands for electromagnetic force and is a historical word for voltage. The voltage is now scaled from the secondary side towards the primary side with still the same voltage per turn on both of the windings. If we have a look at Kirchhoff's voltage law on that primary side, we can meet N1 divided by N2 multiplied by V out and the input voltage V in, which equals the voltage across the transistor. So in this case, the transistor actually has to block more than the input voltage. 
the transfer function of a flyback converter to express the output voltage as a function of the input voltage now not only involves the duty cycle, in this case duty cycle divided by 1 minus d, but it also involves the transformer turns ratio n2 divided by n1. Now n2 can be greater than n1, which helps us to transform the voltage up, or it can be less than n1, which helps us to transfer the voltage down. In many applications where flyback converters are used to convert the grid voltage, so that means the AC mains down from either 230 volts RMS in Europe or 110 volts RMS in US, the primary side would have more windings than the secondary side. Through the duty cycle, we can control the output voltage all the way down to zero at a duty cycle of 0 0.5, we get exactly the transformer turns ratio and 2 divided by 1, which would typically be close to the nominal case, the nominal operating point of the flyback converter. And we are once again approaching a practical limit for the voltage conversion ratio at around 70 or 80% duty cycle where the voltage would actually return all the way down to zero as the transformer has no time to demagnetize on the secondary side anymore and the output capacitor would be discharged by the load.